try to, to connect the dots. There is eclipse, his son passed away. There is a re they, they start saying the reason there is eclipse, because they were not familiar with the eclipse. The reason there is eclipse, because Prophet Muhammad son passed away. If he was a liar, he was a false prophet. Remember a liar, what does he do? He would try to utilize any opportunity to justify his lies, yeah? But what did he do? He said, no, what has happened, it has nothing to do with no one's life and no one's death. This is from God. When you see it, rush to, rush to the prayer. What he did, he connected them to God, not to himself. That's not a nature of a liar. Another example, Prophet Muhammad had, had a friend. His friend was married to a woman that he loved so much. So he used to follow her in the, in the streets. Prophet Muhammad went to her, he divorced her. So he said to her, why don't you go back to him? She said, oh messenger of Allah, are you commanding me as a messenger of Allah? Or are you trying to help between us? He said, no, I'm not commanding you as a messenger of Allah. I'm just trying to help. She said, I don't want it. It's up to you. If he was a liar, imagine his brother is my friend, yeah? And I'm a liar, I claim to be a prophet. And he's married, you know? Of course, I'm going to try to back him up. I'm going to say to sister, yes, remember, I'm a messenger of Allah. God's going to punish you. Go back to him. That shows you it's not the nature of a liar. Once he was traveling with his companions, three of them, yeah? And they were utilizing the same riding beast, taking turn. His companions, they respect him as a messenger of Allah. So they say, oh, messenger, don't worry about us. You uh, be on the beast, on the, on the camel, and we walk. He said, no, 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 no. You're not stronger than me. And I'm not better than you. Look at the humbleness of this man, you know? So we look to the Prophet Muhammad's teaching, yeah, and you look at his biography, like what our scholars mentioned, it's sufficient to show you this man must be the messenger of Allah. So these examples to show this man is trustworthy. One of the, the, the criteria of a true prophet comes with prophecies, all right? Now, before I, I proceed, let me ask you this question. Who knows the future in details? Who knows? Except the creator. Yes, like for example, if I create this phone, no one knows about the phone in details except me. Now, Prophet Muhammad prophesies many things which we can observe right now. You don't have to be a Muslim or Christian to observe it. Prophet Muhammad wasalam, said, there will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man competing in building tall buildings. When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that wasalam, back in those days, the Arabs, they were not known to do that. Those who were known, the Persians and the Romans. So there was no any indication to indicate the Arabs will start building the tall buildings. Let me ask you, where is the tallest building in the world? Burj Khalifa, Dubai, you're right, Dubai. Now the question should ask yourself, how a man that existed 1,400 years ago, alayhi salatu wasalam, prophesies about something we can see right now. Another prophecy, Prophet Muhammad said, there will come a time when the Muslims they will overpower the Persians and the Romans. When the Prophet Muhammad wasalam, prophesied that back in that time, it was in Mecca. The Muslims, they were very weak. They were scared for their lives. Let alone those Muslims, they would take over the greatest empires. Back in those days, the great empires that showed, that um, divide the world into two, the Romans and the, 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 the Persians. Prophet Muhammad is telling his companions, his disciples, his followers, you would do it. Historically speaking, from Muslim sources and non-Muslim sources, that the Muslim overpowered the Persians and the Romans. That is, in one of the uh, British historians said, this prophecy is so powerful. And there's many prophecies. For example, there's a prophecy in the Quran. You see what's happening now with the transgender, with the people changing their creation. Allah mentioned in the Quran that a Satan would say, I will inspire the meaning of the verse and I will inspire them to change Allah's creation. This is what's happening right now. And also, and show you this, why we against it. I'm not inciting no violence against no one, but I'm a Muslim, I believe in Islam. Islam teaches us that Islam which is oppression and is wrong. Why? Imagine you, uh, two sisters, I said to you, look, I believe I'm armless, even though clearly you see I have an arm. But I believe I should have born without an arm and I'm armless. Would you help me to cut off my arm? No. If you know the say, hang on, something wrong with you. You know? What about helping someone to cut off everything? Because he feels something, because he feels depressed. No, we should help him. You know? Because many people are uh, regretting later on. You understand? We're not inciting to kill no one. No, we want because I love good from everyone. And how I do it, 
like I'm doing it with you now, intellectually, logically, breaking it down for you, what Islam is the truth, and whatever opposes Islam is a falsehood. So that's in the Quran. Likewise, to break down for you what Islam is the truth, to summarize everything, pay attention to this. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve five things. Islam came to preserve religion. What does that mean? Islam, not worshipping the true God, is a calamity. It's oppression. And I will demonstrate to you what is the outcome of not worshipping the true God. That's why paganism, atheism is forbidden Islam. Because you start following your own desires. Yes? And we can see what's happening in our society when we start taking our own desires as God beside Allah. Yeah? An example of that I can give you, a man that came to ITV, a Good Morning Show, he said he believes he's a dog. Yeah, he believes that he, he should be a dog, but he was born in the wrong body. So his, grand, his girlfriend, what does, his girlfriend, she gets him the dog suit. When he comes back from work, she put the suit and put him in a cage. And we have to respect him, otherwise we're a bigot. So I have to become mentally disturbed, otherwise I'm a bigot. Now I will become mentally disturbed, it's better. If mentally disturbed is me, a lie. A lie, better for me, you know? So, so, so the, the, the point here is, that, that's the outcome of not having following the true God. That's the first thing, yeah? Islam came to preserve way of life, Islam. Secondly, Islam came to preserve intellect. That's what alcohol and drugs forbidden. Thirdly, Islam came to preserve wealth, yes? Money or other uh, type of wealth. That's why Islam interest and gambling is forbidden. Fourthly, Islam, you okay? You're crying. Okay. Uh, fourthly, Islam came to preserve what they call it, Islam came to preserve, uh, uh, not life, uh, marriage. Islam came to preserve marriage. That's why adultery and fornication is forbidden. Lastly, Islam came to preserve life. That's why killing people unjustly, committing suicide is forbi forbidden. These five things Islam came to preserve, sister, is if we do preserve them, we will have a good society. And Islam, not just to preserve them, rather there is a punishment for those who try to break them, or they can ask Allah for forgiveness. What is the opposite of that? Let me ask you. Alcohol. Is it good for us or bad for us? Bad for us. Alcohol, of course, individually and collectively, is, you know, they say, majority of crimes have been carried out by people because of alcohol. And they say NHS is bleeding because of people drinking alcohol, the harm happens, yeah? So it's, alcohol is bad for us, individually and collectively. Interest. Interest makes the rich richer, poor poorer. So it's bad for us, individually and collectively. Gambling is bad for us, individually and collectively. Um, fornication, adultery, likewise, is bad for us, individually and collectively. For uh, uh, committing suicide, same thing. These five things in our world, or majority of countries, not just is allowed, rather it's been propagated, glorified, and glamorized. Why? Because there are some people who are benefiting from it. And those people who are benefiting from it, majority of times, those who are in power. That's why majority of times, those who are very hostile to Islam, to Islam, those who are in power. So because they are rich, so what they do? They utilize their money to make Islam look bad through the media. Even though Islam is good for us individually and collectively. And the most good thing to have is when you worship God alone. I'll give you an example. Imagine you're in a house. I'll give, it to, or I'll give you about the eyes. Okay? Imagine I said to you, look, sister, we'll be speaking for a long time. Do you know about the eyes? You don't know, yeah? Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, if I said to you, look, sister, I'll be speaking for a long time. I'm a multimillionaire. I will give you a gift. I don't want nothing from you back. Nothing. If I give you a gift, if you do take it, yeah? I know you're going to say no, but if you do take it, if I give you two million pounds as a gift, what would you say to me at least? No, no, if I say I'm a multimillionaire, I'm just giving you as a gift, would you thank me? Would you thank me? Yeah, yeah. As a gift, you will thank me. Would you remember me all the time? Of course, two million pounds is... I will tell her why now. I will give you two million pounds. That was it. On a condition, give me your two eyes. Okay. So your eyes, that's good. I like the way it's direction. You see, that's good. So your eyes is more valuable than two million pounds. So why are you not grateful and remember who gave you eyes for free? You see? I give you two million pounds, you will thank me. You remember me. You know it, alhamdulillah. And now, the example I give you, if you want to buy a gift for your mother or your friend, would you buy a gift that you love or your friend love? If you want to buy a gift, your friend. Likewise, if you want to worship the Creator, we should worship Him the way He loves, not the way we love. Because the way He loves 
is objective. The way we love is subjective. That's why the Creator sent the prophets and messengers. What do you think what I said so far? Does it make sense? It does make sense. That's what I'm saying. You know what is interesting? I've been doing this for the last 15 years. That's why I memorized it. You know? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. You know? Uh, Alhamdulillah, Malak accepted from us. That's, you know, every time I speak to someone who's sincere, respectful person, they will say, you know what? It makes sense. You know why it makes sense? Because the one that created you with the tools of sound reasoning and the, uh, and the sound natural inclination is the same one who, who sent down Islam. That's why it clicks in. It's like, imagine you have a padlock and you're looking for the keys and everyone gives you a keys. The only key that opened the padlock is my key. So who made it? The padlock is me. Likewise, when Islam comes to your natural inclination, clicks in. Naturally, you know, I should be grateful to my creator. And the reminder we say to you, that know for a fact, there is nothing guaranteed in this life except death. That you're going to die. And Allah never put us here just to fulfill our desires. We are here for a greater purpose, which is, is a test to recognize one another, for Allah to implement his name's attributes, to show us his name's attributes, also to worship him alone. So I say to you, do you have any questions so far? So I say, if it makes sense to you, bother to accept Islam and worship God alone. When I say, I've, if, if, I, if I gave you two million pounds, you never said to me, I'm gonna take it, then I'm gonna think, uh, you know, do you beat your wife? You never ask the question. You're gonna remember me all the time, innit? So what about the one who gave you life? You know, if you're in the house and there's a fire everywhere in your house, you try your best to solve yourself and you cannot save yourself. And I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? You would thank me, you would remember me, say, you know what? Thank you very much. But I never gave you life. That's what Allah mentioned in the Quran. If you try to count Allah's blessings, you will never, able, never be able to do so. While we're speaking, we are benefiting from the Creator's blessings, oxygen in out. You know, if you go to hospital, may Allah forbid, and they have to give you oxygen, either they charge you or they have to pay the, the tax payers and pay the money. But they have. Allah has given it to you for free. That's why on the day of resurrection, this believer will come and Allah will say to him, if I give you 10 times of this world, of this universe, and I say to you, give it to me as a, as a sacrifice to save yourself today from the punishment of the fire, would you do it? He will say, oh God, yes. Allah will say to him, I ask you one thing when you are in this life, to worship me alone and to not worship anything, anything beside me. But arrogantly, you reject it. So the outcome for you is the hellfire. That's why many people will say, why well, Allah is punishing people with the hellfire? We should not be asking that question. We should say, oh people, why you want to be in the hellfire? Because Allah told us, Allah clarified to us, Allah showed us the correct path. Allah said, Inna hadaynahu sabila, imma shakir, imma kafura. We showed them the correct path and the evil path. So it's up to you, you know? No, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have no one except yourself. You understand? That's why no one rejects Islam except it goes back to two reasons: psychological reason or a social reason. Psychological reason, rather the person's arrogant, or he says, you know what? If I become Muslim, I have to wear hijab, or I have to stop smoking drugs, or I have to do this or that. No, 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 no. I love drinking alcohol. Or social reason is that if he or she accepts Islam, her parents will turn against her. But all, none of these reasons is valid before Allah. Because yes, respect your parents, take care of them, look after them. But there's priorities. There is pri priorities. There is priorities. That imagine your father took care of your, your parents, took care of you all their lives, fed you, clothed you, uh, everything. When you grow up, you abandon your parents. You disrespect your parents. And you go to your neighbors and you say, my neighbor, thank you very much. Are you a good person? No good. But remember, you've been good to your neighbors, which is good, but you're not a good person. Why? You're missing priorities. Likewise, being good to people, something good. But if you're not good to your creator by worshiping him alone, you're not a good person. That's the reality. You have to be straightforward. And I want good for you. I want to become Muslim, to worship God alone. Well, lie, there's salvation for you. You're worshiping the creator alone. If I ask you what is, you know, I don't want to put pressure on you, but what is the reason that why if it makes sense to you, it's clear. If you know what is the truth, it makes sense. What is stopping you to accept the truth? It's that. I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah, I, I will ask a different question. <laughs> Imagine, this question is going to be harder to be honest. Oh. Okay. Imagine, may Allah forbid, 
if you die today. Because like I said, there's nothing guarantee. Yeah, nothing. And I, I mean, like, I know my neighbor just, uh, I, I remember once I was back home, I'm standing outside my house. My, my neighbor walked past me. And he's like, hi, Shamsi. I said, hi. Then a few minutes later, my, another neighbor came, comes to see me. He said, do you know who died? I said, who died? He said, the father of uh, Ibrahim. I said, no, no, are you getting it wrong? I said, him. I said, maybe you're getting it wrong. I said, listen, he just walked past me. He said, yes, when he was walking downhill, he got heart attack, died. That person, when he walked past me, he never expected he's going to die. Me saying hi to him, I never expected he's going to die. That's what Allah said. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيدَ وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْوَعِيدَ وَجَاءَتْ كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَعَهَا سَائِقٌ وَشَهِيدٌ لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكَ فَبَصَرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٌ Allah said, when the death, when the intoxication of the death comes with the truth, this is exactly what you try to avoid. When you have a panic attack, why are you start panicking? Because you don't know what is happening to you. Imagine when you're about to die. Allah said, When it says, when you, meaning here, when a person is about to die, his life um, got mixed up with the hereafter. So he will be able to see the edge of death. So he's, he, he sees the people in front of him, but he sees the edge of death. Then it's too late now. Because it's too late. If you're not Muslim, it's too late. You know, Allah always threatens the people with the hellfire. Why? Because the hellfire is an evil place. But the hellfire is for the evil ones. So my question to you, imagine you die today, may Allah forbid. What would be your excuse before the one who created you, why you don't accept Islam, that you think is valid before him? If the creator said to you, why you reject Islam when it makes sense, so it's clear. Why are you not worshipping me? What reason you think you will say to him it will be, it will, it will be valid? No, but I told you enough. Yeah, I know you told me And now. if it makes sense, I mean, like, that's what I'm saying, if you have a question, but now you, your life. So you can ask, see the question you said? Look what he said, there is a proof against you now. You said, you said, you, so now you're alive, ask that question, because you never know. If it's, that's what I'm saying, is it clear to you? Like, my question, look. <laughs> what I would say to you, that just look. Why there's only war against Islam in America, newspaper, in the media, in Australia, in Europe? Why? Don't you ask yourself this question? Why? Why always there's negative things about Islam on media? Like I said, because there's a huge war against human nature. And they know the only religion that preserves human nature is Islam. And of course you ask yourself, how man that existed 1,400 years ago, he's coming with his perfect way of life. You know, if you want to run a country, remember I need people, for, I need help. I need experts in economy, experts in uh, war, experts in uh, 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 education. Prophet Muhammad, Islamic countries, is based upon one man's teaching. In everything, in educational things, uh, uh, in business, in transaction, in uh, war, in peace, in, uh, in, uh, in politics, everything. Who is that man who couldn't read and write? Because, and that's a miracle for him. He came with a teaching which... Many people, and everyone that study in Oxford University or any university will never be able to come with the teaching that Prophet Muhammad came with. That's why even the Islamic punishment, capital punishment, that some non-Muslims have problem with. I say it goes back to, it boils down to two things. Either they're ignorant of it or themselves are criminals. That's why they hate it. Yeah, themselves are criminals. That's why they hate that capital punishment. That capital punishment is not for innocent ones. It's for the criminals who want to destroy human uh, uh, societies. So if you have the time now, you can ask questions. If it makes sense, I will advise you. I don't know, not pressure on you. But today, four people become Muslims. Four. Yeah, four. Alhamdulillah. 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 Yeah, yeah. Four. That sister, you know, Allah, it's made me emotional, man. That sister, subhanAllah. Think about the Quran, how many million people have memorized it? Yeah, that's another that's example I use. The Quran. The Quran, the miracle of the Quran. There's many miracles of the Quran. What the miracle Allah said, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّنَّ الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُذَّكِرِ We have made this Quran easy to be memorized. This is a claim in the Quran. Can we verify it? Yes, we can. If the Muslims burn their scriptures, we can bring it back into the written form because it has been memorized by hundreds of millions of Muslims, word for word, letter for letter.
And the miracle of that is what? They don't even know Arabic, some of them. It's like you and I, all of us here, we memorize a book in Chinese, but guess what? We don't even speak Chinese. <laughs> you think, well, what does that make any sense? The Quran has been memorized by many of Muslims. Some of them don't even know Arabic. You understand? Likewise, the, the teaching of the Quran, you know, the, the, about uh, the legislation between you and Allah, between you and your parents, between you and your husband, between you and your, uh, the men and the wife, between the environment, like Prophet Muhammad told us about the environment. He said, if you see, if someone removes something, blocking people's path, that's from Iman. Imagine, yeah. Imagine I'm walking in that pathway, there is something like a big branch. Yeah, a branch of tree. I remove it, because in order for people to walk through, I get a reward from it. Yeah. That's why Islam, uh, in Islam, kissing my mother's head of respect, kissing, her, kissing my mother's hand of respect, I got a reward for it. You know, Islam, you know, smiling is, is huh? smiling. Barakallah, because smiling is type of charity in Islam. Smiling to your brother, sister, to her sister is, is part of Islam. Huh? You don't have to ask smile, but it's time hard for me, you don't know what I'm going through. Well, I smile, man. Alhamdulillah, If you want to know Allah's blessing, if you want to know, listen, brothers, like we said, if you want to know your bl the blessings that Allah has given you, go to hospitals. And see people that have to get help to go to, hosp to the toilets. Alhamdulillah, you can walk to the bathroom by yourself. That's why, you know, go to the graveyard, see the people inside the graves, and see. Subhanallah. Make sense? You're going to become Muslim? Okay, it'll give you two minutes to think, all right? Two well, minutes! This is a big thing I have to think no about. No problem, inshallah. Bar, inshallah, no problem. Well, I said to you, look, this is our Instagram page. You can ask, contact us to ask any question. Okay, inshallah. Give, give her the cake example. I told her about the cake. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, about the, I, I gave her the cake. I don't know, I'm not Okay, sure. uh, 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 yeah, take the, our Instagram page. Yeah. So the example of the brother, he reminds me of, you know, many people, when they want to accept Islam, no, no doubt, it's a big step. My, my wife is a revert. My wife became Muslim when she was 14. She was 14 when she became Muslim. You know, I don't know how old you are, but she was 14, she accepted Islam, you know. The, the, cake, the example of the cake, if I, if I give you the big cake and you eat all of it at once, what will happen? You're going to get vomit, you feel sick. In order for you to feel the sweetness of the cake, you take it bit by bit, step by step. Likewise in Islam, if the most important thing is clear to you, which is the one that's Allah, that yes, I should worship God alone, I should be grateful to Him, and yes, it makes sense, Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, then that's the most important thing. Then step by step, yes, prayer, giving charity, sadaqah, fasting, but all of that is good for you. You know, I was speaking to a, a, a couple, a family from America, so as she said to me, Islam makes haram a lot. I said, no. Islam makes what is bad for us haram. And I said, I will tell you, tell me something. Islam made haram and it's not bad for us. Haram means uh, unlawful. Tell me, yeah, tell me something Allah made. Either is pure evil or has greater evil. Maybe it has some benefits, but the evil overpower or the harm overpower the benefits.